Man, writes Lauren Isley, is the cosmic orphan. He's the only creature in the universe who asks why. Other animals have instincts to guide them, but man has learned to ask questions. Who am I? He asks. Why am I here? Where am I going? Well, ever since the Enlightenment, when modern man threw off the shackles of religion, he's tried to answer those questions without reference to God. But the answers that came back were not exhilarating, but dark and terrible. You are the accidental byproduct of nature, a result of matter plus time plus chance. There is no reason for your existence. All you face is death. Modern man thought that in throwing off God, he had freed himself from all that stifled and repressed him. Instead, he discovered that in killing God, he had only succeeded in orphaning himself. For if there is no God, then man's life becomes ultimately absurd. It is without ultimate meaning, without ultimate value, without ultimate purpose. I'd like to look at each one of these tonight. First, life is without ultimate meaning. If each individual person passes out of existence when he dies, then what ultimate meaning can be given to his life? Does it really matter whether he ever existed or not? Now, it might be said that his life was important because it influenced others or affected the course of history. But that shows only a relative significance to his life, not an ultimate significance. If all of the events are ultimately meaningless, then what significance is there in influencing any of them? Mankind is destined only to perish in the eventual heat death of the universe. And thus the contributions of the scientist to the advance of human knowledge, the efforts of the doctor to alleviate pain and suffering, the efforts of the diplomat to secure peace in the world, the sacrifices of good people everywhere to better the lot of the human race. In the end, all of these come to nothing. They don't make one bit of difference, not one bit. And therefore each person's life is without ultimate significance. And because our lives are ultimately meaningless, the activities that we fill our lives with are also, in the final analysis, meaningless. The long hours spent in study at the university, our friendships, our interests, our jobs, our relationships, all of these are, in the final analysis, ultimately meaningless. This is the horror of modern man. Because he ends in nothing, he ultimately is nothing. What you have in the figure of Christ is an actual person who actually lived, plus a myth, and in some sense, Christ is the union of those two things. The problem is, is I probably believe that, but I don't know, okay. I don't, I'm amazed at my own belief, and I don't understand it. Like, because I've seen Sometimes the objective world and the narrative world touch. You know, that's union synchronicity. And I've seen that many times in my own life. And so in some sense, I believe it's undeniable. You know, we have a narrative sense of the world. For me, that's been the world of morality. That's the world that tells us how to act. It's real, like we treat it like it's real. It's not the objective world, but the narrative and the objective world touch. And the ultimate example of that in principle is supposed to be Christ. But I don't know what to, uh, that seems to me oddly plausible. Yeah. Well, but I still don't know what to make of it. It's too, and partly because it's too terrifying a reality to fully believe. I don't even know what would happen to you if you fully believed it.